In a country where over 84% of the total population is dependent on agriculture, business digest traveled to Bujesera to meet Mr. Twahira Jujene, commonly known as Diego, who is the owner of Gashora Farms in Bujesera district. He grows various crops from chili sauce, bananas, among others. His chili project is part of the Red Chili Pilot Project in partnership with AK Flavors and Aromatics, an Indian company engaged in spices extraction. The pilot aims to develop premium quality, high-value chili varieties in Rwanda and to establish direct linkages between farmers and buyers of red chili in Rwanda and India respectively. Now I understand that uh, you have um, uh, 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 grown tomatoes. Yes. You've grown different things, and Chile is just a new venture. You've 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 come in. Yes. Uh, could you just give me a little bit as to why you decided to come into Chile and leave the other crops that yeah. you were doing before? Yeah. Yeah. I started with tomatoes and the butternut squash, melons. Uh, I shifted from all those crops to chilies because I used to sell to the local market, and the first challenge I was facing was the price fluctuation of uh, the local market. People were not buying. No, they were buying at a cheap price. Cheap price. Sometimes they bought high price. So it was a very big fluctuation uh, prices. So now I shift from the butternuts and the melons and the tomato to chilies because I have already secured the contract of chilies. Uh, uh, with domestic consumption or with uh, exportation? For exportation. So tell me something. For, for chili, uh, for, for tomatoes, the domestic consumption, the, the prices were never constant, like they were fluctuating. All yes, the time. yes. But for chili, the market is already there before you even go to Yeah, the of course, yeah, yeah. you have the contract before you even you start to, you saw the. Where the do seeds. you export this chili? This chili, I, I export them to you, uh, India. Only India? Yeah, this And uh, India. Uh, how much do you export? Monthly or weekly, I don't know. How do you? Yeah, do it? these varieties, you know, we, we export it when they are dry. We harvest only three times, then we, we dry them, then we pack it. So I can say we, 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 we export once in six months. Red chili is a big part of certain cuisines in Africa and of the Indian cuisine as well. While India is one of the leading producers, consumers and exporters of premium quality chili in the world, Randa's chili production is at a very nascent stage, marked by a limited production capacity and the deployment of primitive agronomic practices. However, the country's rich soil fertility and climatic conditions present enormous potential for the cultivation of certain high-value chilies. Diego exports six tons per season, earning over 25,000 US dollars and is looking forward to penetrating other markets after satisfying the local market. Are you looking at other markets, Europe? Of course I have to, I can, if I get another market in Europe, I can, you, you know, you have to compare the price you are getting. Mm. Yeah, so I'm always looking for the the opportunities, good market. And so you told me you export every six months. Yeah. How much do you export in those six months? Yeah, actually, uh, th this this chili it's a, it's a new variety in, in Rwanda. I used to export to UK through another middleman, but this one, this is my contract I have secured this year. So this will be the first uh, uh, export. But I said uh, six months because it's, it is a. Uh, the season. What uh, percent, like quantity? How many do you expect? Yeah, for, facts, like, yeah. Facts, no, actually, how, I'm, I'm, how as, many kilos? I don't know how you do. Yeah, it. as I'm like this, this month, uh, this this season, we're expecting to to export. Uh, yeah. Now this this is it's like a stick it's because really? it's because uh, the way it's like just getting no. in the way. <laughs> <laughs> this is a stick. <laughs> it's protect. The to protect the chili, so that yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, actually, this is, we are expecting to export six ton of dry chili this season, but next season, as we, we are we are mobilizing many farmers to grow this chili, as we have a big demand, mm. so we are expecting to grow mm. like uh, on on 100 hectares from How next year. How many hectares are these? Uh, this one is small pot, but it's in, it's we have uh, eight si seeds. Site, so uh, it's one of the eight sites. So mm. we, uh, my company will we, we export all the, those chilies from the eight sites. Mm. So it was a, like some, somehow this a trial, but this now a trial, it was a but somehow. But you also exporting. Uh, yeah. How much do you sell per kilo? One kilo is two USD. Two, two thousand US dollars. No, no, it's two USD. Two. Two, two dollars. Uh, yeah, two dollars per kilo, kilo. Per kilo, yeah.
I thought it was a thousand dollars. No, no, no. So in those six <laughs> times, you're going to export how much money would that be? Yeah, you multiply six times the uh, six thousand kgs. Two is twelve thousand USD for for just trials. The 28-year-old university graduate agripreneur challenges the stereotype by young people that agriculture is for a certain class of people and emphasizes the need to secure the market before venturing into this sector. Yeah. Many young people like you, yeah. including me, but me, I don't think it's for, for villagers. For me, I just think agriculture is hard to do. Yeah. Okay, they feel that agriculture is complicated. Yeah. It's uh, for uh, parents, for those uneducated people, for those... Um, people in the villages who can access the towns, can you challenge this now that you're actually making $12,000 in just, uh, that's like uh, 10 million, that's like 13 million non francs in just a period of six months. Yeah, even you can get more, it depends, this was like, we started with a small area, but we are planning, because we were trying it, but next year uh, we are planning it to grow on 100 hectares uh, in partnership with other farmers. But uh, what I can tell the other uh, fellow youth or other who, say, who think that the agriculture is for the uneducated people, you ju it's just you need to, uh, to to see what you get from what, in not what not say like uh, agriculture. No, you need to see what you get from it. Uh, you need to be driven by the business, not to say agriculture is for those people, group of people. Just to see what I'm going to get from this business. And you think for meat is mad because we are coming in a muddy area. <laughs> <laughs> Not mad because we get money. There is money after the, 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 the mud. Yeah, the farming and the school. prices fluctuate. You're not even sure no, you're going for, to. No, for the it chili. Depends on the crop you use. Yeah, actually, yeah. But even if the price is, uh, is fluctuate, but it's spent, you need to first to secure the market. And then so you, people should not get into agriculture before securing the market. Yeah, the first thing you have to secure the market. And then uh, you, uh, you make a uh, market intelligence, and then you do a research, you see how much content I'm going to get on one hectare. For example, I'm saying one hectare as a concept, as one unit, uh, the unit in agriculture. You need to see how much you, you, we invest in, and uh, the quantity you're expecting to get, and then the price. If you see it's make uh, some profitability, you invest in the crop. Having ventured into tomatoes, which he says was challenging due to price fluctuations in the market, Diego points out a couple of other challenges they face on a day-to-day -day business with access to seeds being the biggest hiccup, where he says that sometimes they're expensive or very hard to get in time. The challenge here we have is the seeds, to get them on time, because you, you will ask the company, the manufacturing company will tell you, you have to wait for six months, and yet it's a, it's a big challenge. But uh, for for the irrigation, the government's putting his effort. We are, we are getting subsidies at 50%. Also fertilizers, chemical fertilizer, the government also is giving some, we call them, we buy it on voucher. Mm. Yeah, which, for example, in Peke, the KG used to be on 700, but we, if you buy it on, K, on uh, voucher, you buy it at 510. So the government's putting some money to, to encourage farmers to use fertilizer to maximize their profitability. As other young people look at access to finance as the biggest challenge to start any business for the agripreneur Diego, access to markets tends to be the only thing to look at before even starting any business, including agriculture. The young people will tell you, they will say, um, when you ask them why aren't you going, they will say we don't have access to finance. We do not have capital. Have you been able to access finance? Actually, if, uh, when I, I met one big guy, he asked me, what's your first challenge? I told him that my first challenge was the market, because the market is fluctuating. He told me, he told me I'm surprised. Why don't you tell me, like other people, other young people tell you, mm. the, the first challenge we, we faced was the capital. capital. For me, I, I, I don't see it as a big challenge because... You were rich. No, no, I'm not rich. Even you I start. No, 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 no. Uh, Even <laughs> so, how did you get the money from? No, I just started small. With very small. Where did you even get the small? Because others don't have where to get the small. Yeah, la, la, for example, one has, uh, even if you don't have any small, mm, and nice, if nice. Or, or, or yeah, thank you. Mm. If you have a good uh, business idea, mm. you can tell your friend to give you the small one. For example, so if your friend gave you the small money. Yeah, actually, uh, uh, for me, when I, uh, I, I, I had a little money because I had, before I jobbed, I, I went to this business, I had another uh, job, so I, I have the little money. But although don't, if you're a youth coming from the university, don't have a uh, small money. So the little money, 
leased the land, bought the seeds. Which little money is that? The little, that? the little money was five hundred, but I started. Five hundred thousand. But I started with partnership with my friend. Farming in Rwanda remains a largely subsistent in nature, with a rapid increase in population. The pressure on ensuring food security is a constant challenge for the stakeholders. Significant progress has been made in Rwanda in the past decade with regard to overall agricultural production. Hmm. Hmm. This is actually delicious, huh? Now here in Bujasera at Diego's Gashora Farm, if you didn't know, a bit spicy as well. If you do know that agriculture is actually a profitable business, he has over six tons of chili and pili pili on like 2.5 hectares of land. Now, Diego, the new year has brought for him several opportunities, opened uh, doors to the international market. He's now exporting to India where he earns about 25,000 US dollars in just a, a season. That's about six months. If you do the mathematics, that's uh, probably close to 30. 28 to 30 million Rwandan francs. Now, I don't know what excuse you have uh, out there as we enter 2017 because agriculture is a sector that is very important, a sector that is profitable, but we don't really want to get our hands dirty. For Diego, there are a couple of challenges from uh, innovation and getting seeds at a bit expensive uh, prices, but also the seeds delay, but that doesn't stop him from uh, growing this huge, you know, this is the business he does on a single daily basis and he employs over uh, 56 laborers from around uh, the country. He's not only providing food to us and uh, of course uh, taxes, paying taxes through the trade he's doing even to the international markets, but he's also creating jobs and employment. Irrigation development in Rwanda is receiving high priority as the country transforms and intensifies agriculture. Currently, Rwanda has achieved a total of 24,000 hectares developed with irrigation infrastructure and water management facilities. The development of water management infrastructure has been done in marshlands and hillside using a variety of techniques, including pumping from rivers and lakes and the use of water harvesting into valley dams and river diversion structures. This system of irrigation is my idea where I wanted to irrigate crops, not using uh, overhead irrigation because it has a lot of pressure. So uh, this helps me to, to to irrigate my crops without uh, water touching the leaves. Uh, you know, when the water touching the leaves, it's called some fungus um, disease. So and also it's reduced. It's not. It doesn't have a lot of pressure as the, the other system of overhead irrigation. Uh, and also here I have a butternut squash and yet this farm was covered by chilies. Uh, this was one of agricultural practices of rotation, crop rotation. Speaking to Aziz Moiseneza from the Ministry of Agriculture, the expectations from the sector this year are obvious with numerous targets as set by the Ministry to increase agriculture production and a new policy which is set to help develop the sector. Now, um, we know 2016 has been a, a year of development um, from way back from uh, the Howard Buffet project of uh, irrigation to the um, uh, Moroccan king signing, um, uh, investing um, uh, um, a lot of money in uh, um, uh, fertilizers to other projects. The Ministry of Agriculture has been trying so hard to uh, find ways of improvising agriculture and other um, technologies to farmers to see that, you know, the, 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 the it increases the efficiency production and all these other things but um, we're looking at uh, our prospects in uh, the coming year rather in this year we are in 2017 it's mm -hmm. a new year mm -hmm. but for me I want to call it the year of um, agriculture yes. because so much has been said in 2016 what should we expect in this year thank you so much Maggie uh, I think the expectation is should be like obvious because you know we have set up the like, target 2017, near 2018, as you can imagine, uh, uh, I was talking about uh, the rate of production, uh, the agriculture contribution uh, in the national economy. Mm. Uh, the target is normally 8.5 by 2018, as it is set in uh, EDPS 2. Now we are nearing 6%. So as we move to 2017, with the new agriculture policy now being uh, finalized to start by implementation, it's called PSTA 3, uh, we should expect more. 
there are new development in agriculture there are new uh, ambition there are new vision the on the, the strategy as it is said in the in this uh, new agriculture policy uh, we should expect more in different domain one you mentioned it in the investment promotion in agriculture sector uh, land development you know we have developed different lands the land management is key in uh, lifting the current status of agriculture to another level uh, there is also um, the, um, as we are talking about it this century the youth engagement empowerment is going to be much more involved as well as the women without forgetting that there is also the issue of um, uh, market oriented crop market uh, you see we were talking about different uh, export crop you know we have uh, people when we talk about extra, uh, export crop they think about coffee they think about tea but this time we do have more to come and which is under development as well as the share of the service sector on national economy grows larger, the government seeks to transform farming into a productive, high-value market-oriented sector by modernizing 50% of its agriculture by 2020 and therefore improve livelihoods of uh, rural population, achieve food security and increase export of agricultural products as reflected in the Millennium Development Goals and the new Partnership for Africa's Development. So you think you cannot do farming? Yet you buy a bunch of bananas in the market for 5,000 Rwandan francs. Take a look at this. Just one seedling is for 800 Rwandan francs. So imagine if you grew that, how many would you sell to the local market? And mind you, there are several reports warning that by 2030 we're going to have um, a problem of food shortage. I don't know how much you buy the bunch. Probably it will be uh, 20,000 Rwandan francs. Are you willing to spend that? Maybe uh, it's very important for us to actually get into this particular uh, sector, do something, not just even invest in, but um, be part of it. Do something. Grow carrots. This is uh, bananas uh, ibitoshi, but uh, we've just seen uh, chili, piri piri. I don't know what reason you actually have. So for you in ICTs, imagine if there was an easier way to pump the water to come here. In other countries, they use solar to actually pump the water. For Diego, he actually buys a, a lot of fuel. He invests even in fuel to be able to pump this water to actually uh, regate his crops. $35 million of food imported annually. Imagine how many jobs would be created in Africa, but also in Rwanda, if that money was instead um, uh, uh, used in Rwanda, bought from our usual farmers. Also, technology. Look at how many laborers he has. Imagine there was a way this could be easier, not even needing people to be irrigating, but systems put in place to take care of the crops without people. So we need to innovate and transform agriculture to increase productivity and efficiency. The work which would have been done but by just a, a, an innovation, a system or a, 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 an application to irrigate um, probably would be done for two hours, three hours, but they take days to actually do work which could have been done in just a few hours. So to transform agriculture, we need to innovate. We need to get into uh, uh, the sector to farm. I've been farming. If you can take a look, I'm actually getting a bit tired. So these are a couple of things uh, which are very critical if we want to develop the sector. Persons with disabilities are often left out of poverty reduction and development programs. However, for Diego, he's working tirelessly to include these persons with disability in the development at his farm and other business initiatives. So Marcel here, One, this, this is interesting by the way, because yeah, yeah. uh, disability is not inability. Marcel here is the one in charge of security at the farm. You saw big hectares of land all around, you're seeing all that. He takes care of the farm during the night, the hippos, all these small animals that come to destroy the crops he's the one that takes care of them as you can see he's actually a bit lame but it, it's not stopping him from working him as well um manuel. bonsoir manuel <laughs> bonsoir manuel he's working firmly but he's actually blind and yet he's one of the guys irrigating i've he's seen him also. he's a supervisor directing and calling on people to come and actually do the work and yet he is blind manuel <laughs> oh he's blind but again 
inability, rather disability is not inability. And that brings me to you, why do you decide to hire them actually? Uh, is it that they are more effective, can actually manage yeah, do more no. work than someone else would have done? When I came here, I found this gentleman who is skeletal with the hippos. But they told me that because he, maybe, you know, when he's the one who used to, to do the security for other farmers around here, then I, I give him opportunities because if he knows about that, so I couldn't give someone other, uh, this opportunity. Because there were men looking for that job, but I chose this one because it could help me, him when, for his living uh, style. But the other guy also, uh, for when I came here also, I, he told me that he can, he's able. So, to work. Uh, to work. Has he been able? Yeah, of course. Yeah. And, also, and also he's very honest. Honest. Yeah.